Hello everyone. So in this class today, I'm going to start a new chapter that is chapter 22 marine life and deposits as the name, the topic of the chapter suggests. So here the main objectives of this uh, learning of the chapter will be best on the life on the deposits which are found in the marine uh, ecosystem. Okay, so the total area from the sea coast to the greater depth of the sea is known as marine environment as we have learned in the previous chapter also isn't it so all the continental self from the beginning of the continental self to the continental slope and the whole abyssal plain isn't it it's the marine environment all the features all the creatures which are found in that environment it's termed as marine environment in that ecosystem which survives co coexist okay so that is termed as marine environment so large varieties of flora and fauna is found in this uh, area as i mentioned already like both features and creatures isn't it and organisms are found in this area both vegetations as well as animals so it is divided into two principal realms that is the pelagic refers and pelagic and the pethnic pelagic and pethnic so pelagic refers to the open ocean environments and includes the entire mass of the water entire mass okay from top to the bottom from left to the right the entire ocean or the sea is the pelagic environment now bethnic refers to the part of the ocean which is populated by the organisms okay now the area in which the uh, like larger varieties of organisms are found in the marine environment that areas or that part specifically is mentioned as the bethnic areas okay now let us further so before we move on to the further classification you can see over here in this area uh, the difference of the pelagic zone and the bethnic zone has also been given okay so on this side if you see the pelagic zone the entire mass of the water okay from top to the bottom is the pelagic zone okay and the bethnic zone just below the continental self okay from where the continental slope begins from that part to the bottom of the sea or the bottom of the marine environment is the bethnic zone okay now let's uh, move on to the classification or further classification of the pelagic and the bethnic zone okay now the pelagic zone is further classified into two areas one is the neritic zone and another one is the oceanic zone okay now the pelagic zone only now this pelagic zone okay now this uh, neritic zone lies in the continental self area now this is the most populated zone because here more amount of sunlight uh, reaches reach this area okay and it led to the rise of uh, you know growth of many uh, marine animals as well as uh, plants in this area okay now the if we move further from the continental self area now that is the mark or the beginning of the oceanic zone okay now it is also you know divided into two parts one is the photic zone and another one is the aphotic zone now oceanic zone the photic zone means the area up to which the sunlight can reach in the open ocean okay now beneath that area beneath that area from where the sunlight can cannot penetrate deeper into the ocean bottom that particular zone is known as aphotic zone understood so this is the classification of pelagic zone pelagic zone near the continental self where more amount of you know the temperature variation is found uh, turbulence are also found wave turbulence are also present understood and uh, you know salinity is also more in amount okay so in that area is the neritic zone and here it uh, more amount of uh, marine population is also found now beneath beyond that area beyond that continental self area let's say uh, up to the 200 kilometer okay now beyond that area is the oceanic zone 
now it is also further classified into two parts that is the photic zone and aphotic zone a photic zone means that part of that ocean up to which the sunlight can penetrate okay and beneath that area where the sunlight cannot reach okay deeper ocean that part is known as that part is known as aphotic zone okay okay now let's move on to the another realm that is the bethnic realm and which is also further classified into two the littoral zone and the deep sea zone okay it's kind of similar with the neritic and the oceanic province only so here littoral zone consider uh, up to the you know the continental self area where the huge amount of oceanic foods are available okay so where it is characterized by the high and the low tide area okay let's consider up to the depth of 200 meters okay the continental self area now apart from that the deep sea zone is also there now basically in the trough and trenches the uh, like uh, animals which are found in the deep ocean in the deep cracks or the trench which is present in the oceanic flows okay like in mariana trench now those kinds of organisms are called the deep sea zones or those kinds of places are known as the deep sea zone now here the creatures which are found or the marine animals which are found are completely are completely different from the uh, like the completely differs from the uh, animals which are found in the littoral or in the neritic or in the oceanic province they are completely different from the upper uh, level of the oceanic animals now we will further move on to the modes of the marine life okay now marine plants and animal can be classified into three categories namely the planktons benthos and the nectar now as i was referring the three modes of ocean planktons nectons and the benthos okay as uh, you can see here in the diagrams also now planktons uh, refers to the smaller organisms or the microorganisms also we can say uh, which exist uh, both okay both flora and fauna if it is flora that is known as phytoplanktons okay and if it is fauna then it is known as zooplanktons okay now the planktons are basically you know are found in the shallow water up to the depth of 200 meters so that means it is basically found in the continental self area okay and uh, like uh, means where the sunlight can reach okay in that area only those kinds of planktons are uh, vividly or uh, readily available okay and they grow well in the upwelling cold currents okay mm -hmm. means the currents or the sea currents which is the sea uh, currents or the ocean currents which is very uh, you know uh, cold in nature which comes from the antarctic and the sub arctic areas in this area the in those kinds of continental self area okay the planktons can grow well okay now next comes is the nectar now nectons are the must uh, the fish okay or the now nectons are the fish well dolphins the swimming organisms which are present in the uh, ocean okay now those are known as nectons now those nectons are uh, you know are completely dependent upon the planktons for their food okay and they continuously move from one place to another in search of food okay now next is the benthos benthos means those uh, flora and fauna both again over here also now they are present at the bottom of the ocean understood now they can be a moving object also or they can be immobile also or fixed or stationary in one place okay so benthos and nectar and plankton are the three mode of organisms which are present in the ocean so next is the marine vegetation and marine vegetation primarily consists of the primitive plant and form the most, uh, most outstanding of which is an algae okay the now the algae is uh, i hope everyone have you know uh, seen algae isn't it which is in and all, all around our place and basically in the rainy season isn't it we are mostly uh, the, it's mostly visible in uh, most of the places isn't it so that green or the bluish 
green color structure which we see okay so there is no differentiation in between the marine algae and the vegetation or the land algae it is almost very similar to each other okay and it contains chlorophyll in your in its own body and it's capable of doing photosynthesis also okay means it's capable of making its own food and it can grow anyway it can grow in the uh, animals as well as it can grow grow over the plants also okay so if it grows over the plants it is called epiphytic and if it grows on the body or the surface of the animals then it is known as the epizoic okay now they are beautifully colored and most common of them are the blue green green red and the brown algae okay now blue green algae are basically found in the fresh and the warm water and green algae are also found in those area where the uh, sunlight can reach okay and lives in the shallow water uh, less say less than 10 meters deeper sea lotus uh, halimeda and the neptune saving bros are some important example of green algae next is the red algae is the most uh, beautiful of all the sea plants irish moss is the best example brown algae is also the advanced types of algae including family of forms like kelp and uh, sargassum okay so those are the some of the examples which are found in the sargasso sea of north atlantic ocean derives the name from the sargassum brown algae are the important ocean resources of the iodine and potash okay so this was some of the marine vegetation students now uh, we will move on to the marine deposits and um, all those materials okay which are located at the bottom of the ocean is known as deposits okay which can be brought down by the sea waves or the rivers or streams okay uh, so or the waves also and it is broadly classified into two groups there are the terrigenous deposits and the pelagic deposits again now terrigenous deposits terrigenous deposits are further classified into three types they are the terrigenous deposits volcanic deposits and the organic deposits so as i said mentioned earlier it can be brought down by the uh, rivers wind and the other agents of uh, you know change okay or the gradation we can say so the terrigenous deposits are mainly found on the continental shelf area okay and the continental slope okay very near to the shoreline or very near to the coastal areas we can say okay so the large fragments of the rock are deposited near the seashore and the finer materials like sand silt clay and all okay will be deposited into the will be taken far away into the open sea also and uh, like ultimately it will settle down it will sediment okay sedimentation will be there but on the oceanic floor okay so thus there will be a gradual decrease of the coarseness of the material from shore to the open sea in the shore we find larger particles and more we venture into the deeper ocean into the open sea the particles will become more finer okay gradually the size of the particles will decrease from the uh, shore line to the uh, like to the open sea okay so depending upon the size of the rock fragments sediments can broadly be classified into gravel sand and the mud okay so next is the volcanic deposits now volcanic deposits are also found in the continental shelf and the continental slope area and some are found in the abyssal plain area okay now those deposits are the fragments which has uh, you know the origin from the which has originated from the volcanism is uh, volcanic deposits simple as that next is the organic deposits means the millions of sea animals and the creatures or the plants isn't it they will also be present in the uh, like uh, in the continental shelf or the slope area isn't it now eventually what happens is one day they will die and when they die their cells and their skeletons will be deposited on the oceanic floor okay now the deposits of the you know the date deposits of the date animals okay or the marine animals are considered as the organic deposits are considered as the organic deposits so uh, next is your pelagic deposits okay now uh, today we will end our class over here students in the next class i will be discussing about the pelagic deposits let's keep this topic for the next class okay so i hope i was able to clear uh, some of the topics here and i hope you were able to understand if not then you can uh, text me in the group or here also
थैंक यू स्टूडेंट्स